Good morning, good afternoon, um, East Coast, West Coast, depending on where you're joining us today. Um, we are going to go over a topic that is always asked about. We, we present you know, the product, what we can do from an energy standpoint, but um, it's always top of mind. How do I get started on the next project? How easy is it to work with AeroSeal? What is the process to get, a, get this project moving forward and underway on uh, saving me and my energy? So this entire presentation is there to answer these questions. We will go through uh, some components of what is AeroSeal, how can it fit, just a, a touch base, um, a reminder of what AeroSeal is and can do, and then move into the bread and butter of what everybody's here for today. Um, so we are going to be joined today by three of our very own. We have John Harrington. Um, he recently joined the company. He's our director of application engineering. He will be going through a lot of the background on AeroSeal and what it is, what it does. Um, then we'll be followed up by Art Wagner, our commercial account executive, to really walk through what has AeroSeal been used on, um, go through the process and a little bit more details building off of John. And then April's going to bring it home with her version and her uh, experience of working directly with the ESCOs and the questions that come up in the entire process from that first call when everybody comes through and asks, how do I get started? How do I move forward? All the way to project launch and project completion. So without further ado, let's get into the agenda for today. As I stated, we're going to go over, you know, the ESCOs. That's what this is around. So what are you guys looking for? What does AeroSeal offer to get in and fill that void? And then how to get started with it. So at this point, I will pass it over to John. Thank you, Billy. Um, sure. So we have two types of savings. We uh, we talk about direct, indirect, and most of our savings um, we provide for our clients are direct savings. An example of this is so let's say we have ductwork that's leaking into the plenum. Say so we're leaking at 15 percent, um, and that existing system is meeting load. Well, we'll go in and seal that ductwork. Now that excess air that was traveling into the plenum is now forced down into the occupied zone of the space. And what's gonna happen is, if you have a VAV system, that system is gonna automatically back up, slow down until we get the right amount of air. Or if you have a CAV system, we're gonna go ahead and reshiv that constant air volume system, and we're gonna slow that fan motor down. In either case, you know what's gonna happen is when we reduce our fan speed by 15%, uh, for example, the power reduction is going to be much greater than that. It's not a one to one ratio. It's a one to to the third power ratio of reduction, or, or and then and that comes out to about 40% power reduction. Okay, so that reduced and again, so that reduced speed um, reduces um, KWH and reduces demand charges. In addition to that, we're going to reduce our outside air um, heating and cooling needs because when you slow down your fan you induce less outside air, less heating and cooling. So we get um, savings uh, um, from, from that also. Now, indirect savings doesn't happen all the time, but every once in a while, we run into a situation where we have duct work that can't be accessed in a chase, um, just in a, in, a, in a soffit area. And the client, and we've had it before, a client is in a position or, or has gotten pricing to demo that you know, open open up those walls, demo that ductwork, and install new. And we've had situations where we've been able to to to, to connect to that ductwork, fix some major mechanical problems in, in a couple couple uh, spots, and seal that ductwork from the inside. So you know, it's it's it doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, it it can save it can save millions of dollars. You know, so it's a great great alternative. Um, uh, it's a great alternative. In, in April, I think you mentioned, didn't you? Didn't you run across a, a situation just recently at a California prison? Uh, could you provide some details on the the numbers? 
Yeah, that. so um, we just did a prison project for Amoresco, and Art's going to talk about that a little later as well. But uh, in that project, they thought that uh, duct, all the duct work was going to need replaced. There was areas where it was going, it was rusted out. Um, and the price they got for that was close to $5 million, which really would have made the project a no-go. Um, but we were able to do some minor mechanical repairs, clean that duct, and do AeroSeal. And really, along with the energy savings that they got from the AeroSeal measure, um, they were able to do a cost avoidance of about $3.8 million um, by salvaging that duct work. So that's just one of the cases uh, where we were a where we were we're able to save the duct and um, keep that existing duct in place. Awesome, thank you, April. Um, next slide, why seal ducts? Well, you know, energy conservation is the main driver for ESCOs. And quite honestly, it's a main driver for most of our clients, but there's there are also some added benefits um, in the form of improved indoor air quality. You know, we're reducing the CFM that's entering the occupied zone. That means increased air changes per hour. There's comfort increases. You know, we have the, you have the uh, example that happens a lot, the thermostat three quarters of the way down the zone that doesn't get any air, that's uncomfortable. So when we seal that ductwork, air gets to where it's supposed to get and, and you know, set points are maintained as they should be. Uh, avoided cost of replacing ducts, which we just mentioned. And then uh, eliminate unsightly mastic on architectural ducts. So we can, we can perform an aeroseal on new ductwork. So if you have new exposed ductwork, or um, even existing ductworks that's leaking, we can we can seal that and improve the look. And next one. Okay, this is really surprising to me when I when I first started looking at AeroSeal, and I was a I was a customer before I started working here. So, um, you know, seventy five percent of commercial ductwork systems leak ten to twenty five percent, and we find that's very consistent with with our numbers. And I'm going to back up for a second. These are this is an aero seal, seal providing these numbers. You can look at the bottom. These are some very, you know, high reputable organization organizations: Lawrence Berkeley, ASHRAE, Florida Solar Energy Center. So these numbers are coming from you know third-party organizations. Um, light commercial ductwork is especially bad, and we see an average of around 30% duct leakage. So you know, office buildings um, are, are particularly bad. And um, you know, 10 to 20% of the air uh, supplied by the fans don't reach the occupied space. It gets typically, it, 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 le it gets leaked into the plenum where it doesn't do anyone in the occupied space uh, any good. So again, really high numbers. And I think the takeaway here is, you know, if you, if you go into a space, the probability of sealing ductwork as an ECM is, is pretty high. Okay, top 10 building faults by cost. I think this, I think maybe a better title for this would be energy, top 10 energy wasters. And the, the, the big takeaway here is, you know, duct leakage uh, costs $2.9 billion annually, which is a really a surprise, when, especially when I look at HVAC and lighting, you know, running when unoccupied. You know, I remember, you know, I've done a lot of energy audits and, and those two, those two ECMs, the, 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 the low cost, high payback ECMs were always ones that people were looking for. You know, it's, it's, it was a no brainer. If you could shut it off, it doesn't get any more efficient than off, right? But I think duct leakage is really flies under the radar. And, and, it's, and as, as you can see, it's a pretty significant problem. Okay, CDC COVID-19 guidance, and this is guidance on operating your HVAC system. And if you look at those bullet points, the one thing they all have in common is they don't help your energy. They don't help your energy costs, they increase your energy costs. So we have a lot of clients, as, as you probably do also, that are running their HVAC systems 24 seven. Um, they're increasing the outdoor air ventilation. And it's, it's crazy when you look at some of these articles um, on on how to um, you know, protect buildings against COVID, people will say just run 100% outside air or turn your outside, open your outside air dampers 100%, and people are just doing it. So I have a feeling there's a lot of uncomfortable buildings out there this summer, 
um, and probably a lot of frozen coils this winter. And then final point is, um, you know, um, you make sure you balance your dampers um, to compensate for that increased ventilation. So I'm sure people are opening up those outside air dampers and they're not increasing their exhaust or balancing the return. So we have, you know, we have really good intentions, um, but probably causing a lot of problems. So, you know, we can't, uh, AeroSeal can't mitigate all these added costs, but, you know, I think that is one uh, indoor air quality measure that actually saves money. So, you know, the, the, these these leakage problems are really going to be compounded with all these activities. So I think we can minimize some of that impact uh, with a, a sealing of the duct. Mm, there we go. I think I might have skipped. Let me go here back. Bear with me here. Hold on, John. We'll go back. I think you went a little okay. further. There you Perfect. go. Thank you. Okay, so this next graphic is pretty interesting. It shows if you look at the blue here, this is this is uh, represents, of course, fresh air coming into the air handling unit, um, along with return air mixing with the outside air. And what this is representing is that the outside air, the outside air is uh, is maybe 20% of the supplier. It's all mixed together, but it's good that it's, they're just trying to show it as a separate path to show what a proper system should do. So as we bring in the fresh air, if we don't have any duct leaks, that fresh air stays with the supplier or the return air, or they're mixed together, but they stay together. We're just charged into the space. That, that air gets contaminated, you know, uh, I guess contaminated to some extent and is returned back to the ductwork or exhausted, exhausted outside. So again, that fresh air is important. We want that fresh air getting to the occupied zone and then this is a sealed system and that's what, what happens. So I'm gonna try and click here to see if I, okay, good. Okay, so here's a system with leaky ducts. So again, we're bringing in the fresh air, same amount as we did before. Or, or possibly more. Um, we're, instead of staying mixed with the supplier and entering the room, we're leaking out into the plenum space. A percentage of that outsider is leaking into the plenum space is not making it down to the occupied zone, is not diluting the contaminated air, and we have a you know poor indoor air quality. Look at the next slide. Implications of exhaust duct leakage. Um, you know, typically garage fans only run during occupied times, or they run on um, carbon monoxide sensors. So you'll you'll go into a garage, and oftentimes you'll see them not running at all. But with COVID, with CDC recommendations, a lot of people are are running these garage fans. You know, at, at least during occupied hours, and 30 minutes before, and 30 minutes after. So we've run across an opportunity to seal. We've, we've, we've run across a pretty good project to seal some of these exhaust ducts in garage uh, in garage facilities. Um, in April, I think we just finished a project in California, didn't we? That was a good opportunity. Uh, yeah, there's a project out in Oakland. Um, there was a a parking garage space attached to a 23-story office complex and and that those fans were running um pretty much 24 7 because uh they wanted to keep everything fresh they were really worried about different pollutants things like that so uh the fans are running at really high static and we were able to show a significant energy savings um by sealing up uh, those um, shafts where the exhaust fans were Great, thank you, April. Um, the next section is the hospital isolation rooms. Now, this is a situation where hey, we're, we're, we're improving life safety, we're improving indoor air quality, and we have some pretty nice paybacks as well. Some of these hospital exhaust systems are very high, very high CFM, very high static pressure, high horsepower. 
Um, so this is becoming a, a, a better and better opportunity. We're getting more and more interest in projects like this. And we're, we're currently working on um, a project with 45 isolation rooms in Hong Kong, along with um, operating room duct that, that was leaky. So great opportunity to, to improve IEQ and save energy. Oh, sorry, I went for one more. Okay, we can just stay here. <laughs> that last one was just another another slide about um, exhaust duct for toilet rooms. And again, you know, the thought here is, you know, when we exhaust, when we seal duct work, um, when we still exhaust duct work, we're exhausting air at the points we're supposed to be exhausted from, not not at different points throughout the shaft where, where we have leakage problems. So real critical for indoor quality. And again, you know, um, we always look at exhaust shafts um, or exhaust fans as an opportunity to, to, to save money also. Um, so here, here's an example of a sealed exhaust duct. And you know we have polluted air in, in the toilet room or, or any place. Um, and in this case, all that polluted air is being you know, sucked up into the um, exhaust duct and exhausted outside where it belongs. Um, and if we look at the next slide, If we have a leaky exhaust duct, you know, we're still pulling some air from the infected area, the polluted area. But if we have holes along the way um, to the exhaust fan, you know, we're, we're exhausting air from who knows where, you know, other areas except where it's supposed to be exhausted from. And April always gives a good example of a straw. So if you have a straw and you're, you're sucking water up and you have a hole in the center of the straw, you're not sucking up any water, you're, you're sucking air. So. That's a good visualization of what's happening with um, leaky uh, leaky exhaust systems that we can seal. Okay, you know, I think April, this is uh, this is uh, back to you, correct? Yes, thanks, John. So um, just like John said, what we've really been trying to do in the past five years since uh, we've been working with ESCOs is really ensuring that uh, Aeroseal is a viable ECM for you and make it as easy as possible for you to work with Aeroseal. So um, the most important thing for us is that we're measurable and quantifiable. So whether that's um, giving those energy models to you, which we'll discuss later, or providing the certificate of completion every time we're sealing up a section of the duct, telling you how much leakage is there when we start, how much is done, is there when we're finished, um, giving you a quick payback. Um, three to six years is what we see on average. A lot of times, um, even in the Northeast, we can do even better than that. Um, it's safe and effective. So we do this in clean rooms, hospitals, prisons, um, all sorts of federal, uh, army, navy, all those types of facilities. So effective everywhere. Um, in longevity, this lasts over 40 years. So this isn't something that you have to keep doing over and again, uh, no reapplication needed. And this is something that as soon as we seal up the duct, you start seeing that energy savings immediately. Those VAVs, you know, are immediately getting turned down. If it's a constant volume, we can reshoot that motor and you start seeing that fan energy savings and reduction in outside air immediately. All right, I am going to turn it over to Art Wagner, and he's going to talk a little bit more about Aeroseal and um, our ECM. Hey, thanks, April. I appreciate it. Uh, I wanted to talk uh, to everyone a, a little bit just about uh, some Aeroseal case studies as well as market areas that we tend to view as high profile targets that might be good targets for you as well. Uh, we had talked about some federal and military applications. Aeroseal right now is involved in uh, military applications that are both domestic and abroad. Uh, obviously, with the COVID pandemic right now, we're working a lot with healthcare. 
that not only includes hospitals, but it includes nursing home, uh, any kind of assisted living facilities. We've seen quite a bit of, uh, of, of business come from those folks as well as questions. But we're also working with higher education facilities. Uh, right now, it's really hard to pinpoint uh, on a state by state or even conference by conference basis who's coming to school when. Uh, so what we're trying to do is target and work with facility managers uh, to make sure that they're prepared when their students do come back to campus full time for uh, education. We also work with multifamily and hospitality. Uh, multifamily being big condo complexes, those are great opportunities for us, as well as hospitality, uh, i.e. some larger hotel chains that we're working with. Uh, April had mentioned a couple critical applications. Uh, we've worked with some uh, big hospitals that need some help in specific areas, as well as uh, pharmaceutical manufacturers, anything that involves clean rooms, uh, we'd be able to help with. And through our dealer network, we're also able to help with any kind of light commercial application that you might have. I did have a couple specific case studies that I wanted to share with you. The first is the Federal Bureau of Prisons Facility. This is out in San Diego, and we had alluded to it a little bit earlier. Uh, this facility was really looking at having to replace almost $5 million worth of duct work. Uh, before they went ahead and did that, they kind of threw a Hail Mary to Aeroseal and said, let's see what we could do uh, with Aeroseal rather than uh, demolishing existing duct work. We were able to provide uh, almost a 90% reduction in leakage, about $140,000 in energy savings that were achieved annually. And we were able to get uh, the, the building done six months ahead of schedule, really without any uh, major ramifications to inmate housing. Uh, we've worked with several different hospitals. Uh, this one is in upstate New York. This was a much older facility. It's 125 years old. Uh, they obviously were looking for some savings, as you might imagine. Their ductwork was really in pretty bad condition when we had the opportunity to look at it. Uh, we were able to provide a 97% reduction in leakage. Uh, there's no disruption to the hospital operations. Uh, when we do come in to do work, we'll make sure that we coordinate with a facility coordinator at, uh, at the local facility uh, to make sure that we're not inconveniencing any kind of patient care. And in this particular uh, instance, we're able to save $23,000 per year in energy savings. And uh, the last is West Texas A&M University. Uh, we partnered here with Amoresco. Uh, they had almost 18,000 CFM of leakage before we started, once we did our initial audit. After we were done with that, we, we were able to get it down to uh, 1,271 CFM of leakage. So that's almost a 93% uh, reduction in the leakage. Uh, we reached all their project goals and uh, we're able to provide $30,000 in energy savings annually. Uh, I'd also recommend that if you're interested in any kind of further case studies, go to aeroseal.com. Uh, there, if you click on the commercial tab, you'll be able to see any kind of white papers, safety and product data sheets, uh, all sorts of extra case studies. We have over 50 that are published that are on our website. And if you're looking for something that you can't find, please feel free to give me uh, an email back at art.wagner at aeroseal.com, and I'd be happy to help. So April, thank you. Awesome, thanks Art. So Aeroseal has really, like I said before, worked hard to make it an, a comprehensive solution for you. When you have uh, an issue with your duct or whether you're just looking for another ECM in your project, like we said before, the number one building fault 
is duct leakage. But we understand that when you're looking for an ECM, you just want us to take care of it. So whether it's a duct system that uh, needs air seal but may also need cleaning, um, we can help you with that. If it's AeroSeal, it may also need some minor re mechanical repairs. Uh, we can do that. Whether your flexible duct connectors need replaced, we look at all of that as well. So everywhere from audit to evaluation to measurement and verification, AeroSeal is there with you to make this as smooth as possible um, for your project. So let's talk about what happens um, when we go through the AeroSeal project. Just like uh, what happened with the library at West Texas A&M uh, or the prison uh, that we talked about, we first start with a quick pre-audit evaluation. So what will happen is I ask you for seven data points, and basically those are the data points that are needed for inputs to our energy model. Um, our energy model I'll talk about a little bit later, um, but we can also have a deep dive call to go through our energy models and what's involved with those, what the formulas are. Um, but I'll ask you for those seven inputs. So we can start doing on an average cost uh, what the simple payback would be uh, for that project. So we know immediately, hey, this is gonna be a viable building or a viable project, or it might not be something that is good for either of us, right? So we start with that quick pre-audit evaluation. From there, if it's good for, for both of us, then we move forward with a level one audit. So this is usually during the investment grade audit stage. Um, at that quick pre-audit evaluation, we can do that at any time, whether you're just at an RFP process or whether you've already won the business, um, we can start evaluating and doing some of those preliminary energy models for you. At that level one audit, we do that at no cost, no risk to you at all. Uh, we send out auditors to look at the building and we'll show you a little bit here um, what that process looks like. Um, at that point, we're looking for um, how we score the building and estimate the duct leakage amount in each of the systems, and then anything we'll need for our installation team when they're actually on site. So different access points, injection points, anything that might be an issue, you know, if we're at a university and uh, the seating in classrooms uh, may block access to a VAV box, or if we're in a hospital and we know it's a critical space, how we can work around that. So they're looking at all those things during the audit. They're also, also looking for things like uh, clean, how clean the duct is, um, if there's any kind of repairs that need made, that sort of thing. Um, and after they do the audit, we'll give you an audit report and then also a project plan and proposal. So we'll tell you how much it'll cost, what the impact would be for the audit or for the um, for the occupants in the space, basically everything you need to present that to your customers. So this is what I need um, for that quick pre-audit evaluation. So every time you email me, actually one just came in while uh, we were talking earlier uh, for a new project and I sent her exactly what um, this says here. This is what we need every time a project starts. So basically occupancy hours or air handler runtime, energy costs, design conditions, and then the drawings and mechanical schedules. That helps us start running preliminary energy models it helps us um, really start evaluating what that payback might be for each building. The only thing we don't know um, before we actually go out and walk a building is what that duct leakage amount is. So we'll start putting in conservative numbers or numbers we know for like buildings and give you at least a baseline. And then after we go and do those audits, we'll start updating those numbers with more accurate information. Um, at this point, though, if you did have a test and balance report or something like that, we could use those to uh, fill in that duct leakage number or at least have a better idea. Um, our energy models were developed um, 
We were developed 25 years ago at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. And at the time we had a really cool technology, but it really wasn't an easy way for ESCOs to work with us. And so really the first step after we decided we wanted to go into this space was to develop energy models that were both easy for you to use, um, but also very transparent. So our energy models, we have four, are um, Excel based. They, we have an exhaust model, we have a constant volume model, and we have two VAV models, one for changeover systems and one for non-changeover systems. And depending on the type of system that you have, um, we use those models. So uh, if you're interested in learning more about those models, getting copies of them, um, we have the white page papers that go along with them. Um, we can provide those to you. Every time that we do any modeling for any of your buildings, we provide those to you. The formulas are all completely unlocked and visible. Um, so you can actually see where those saving numbers are coming from and uh, make those available for your clients as well if they have any questions. So when we come out and we do that level one audit, um, we walk the building, we take lots of pictures. A lot of times the guys have thermal imaging cameras, so they're, take, they're taking pictures with that as well. Um, we will provide you all of that information. They're actually scoring the building as well. So we have a system where based on all of our past experience and past projects, we estimate the duct leakage based on what we see during that walkthrough. So each system will be scored as well, and we'll provide that in the audit report. We'll update the energy models based on what we saw during that walkthrough. And then we'll have a call with you to review all the models in the report and make sure that you understand. So this is a picture of uh, or pictures that were taken during audits. Um, just some of the things that the guys are looking at and, and showing. You can see here on the right, you know, we look for things like is the external lining inflated, showing that mattress effect. We're looking for things like on the bottom here, you know, different signs of duct leakage, visible signs. The third one over um, has kind of no mastic on that connection. It also shows some visible signs of leakage. Um, here in that middle row, you can show, it looks like there's possibly um, an instrument or a sensor that was once in there and then never patched. We see that quite a bit. So basically they just take lots of pictures and they, they provide descriptions to us and um, we provide that back to you. So you have all the evidence you need to show your customers um, why uh, there's, we think that there's duct leakage in the building and what we estimate that to be. So when we do that proposal and review, we'll have a breakdown in, of the investment. We'll show you exactly, you know, why we think the, the leakage rate is this much, how much kilowatt hour savings, therm savings, KW savings are. Um, we'll provide that all to you. Um, and like I said, there's no risk involved. All of our results are guaranteed to you. So if we tell you that there's 15% leakage in the building and we're gonna seal up 90% of that, um, we guarantee that we will do that. So these are um, pictures of our guys out doing a project. And this is actually our Aeroseal corporate headquarters, which is pretty cool. Um, I will actually show a video as well that describes the aeroseal process and what happens uh, when they get on site. Aeroseal is a breakthrough duct sealing technology that provides a highly effective means of sealing HVAC ducts, ventilation shafts, and other commercial duct work. Developed at Berkeley National Laboratory with funding from the U.S. Department of Energy and others, Aeroseal works from inside the ducts to quickly and easily locate and seal all the leaks, even those hidden behind walls, under insulation, or in other hard-to-access locations. The Aeroseal process is both safe and easy to administer. By sealing from inside the ducts, 
Duraseal eliminates the demolition and labor-intensive processes associated with traditional sealing methods. Before sealing begins, an on-site examination of the existing ductwork provides critical information needed to determine the size and scope of the project. We photo document the condition of the system and estimate the amount of air leaking from the ductwork. This enables Aeroseal to draw detailed plans. Technicians meet with your staff to plan out the procedure and get a better understanding of the facility operations and develop a specific schedule that will alleviate any staff concerns and minimize disruption during the sealing process. Once plans are approved, a date is set to begin. At that time, a crew of two or more technicians arrives ready to work. The sealing process begins by prepping the section of ductwork to be sealed. For constant volume systems or returns, the diffusers and grills serving that section of ductwork are removed and foam plugs are inserted into the end of the duct to block air from escaping. This effectively isolates the portions of ductwork being sealed. For variable volume systems, blocking material is inserted upstream of the inlet to the terminal box to ensure coils and pressure sensing devices are not exposed to sealant. Air handling units must also be blocked with foam or other materials in order to protect sensitive mechanical components from the sealing process. Smoke detectors and sensors in the ductwork and throughout the building are protected to prevent contact with the sealant material. It is not necessary to isolate silencers, turning vanes, balance dampers, or fire dampers because the sealant will not adhere to them. Fire alarms in the immediate project area are temporarily disabled to prevent false alarms. Some sealant particles will escape through the holes in the ductwork during sealing. Aeroseal utilizes negative air machines to depressurize sealing cavities and plenums and capture the sealant. Scrubber fans also ensure that any overspray entering occupied spaces is captured. To begin, a temporary collar is attached to an access hole in the ductwork. The Aeroseal injection machine is assembled and connected to the duct system using a long flexible plastic tube. There are typically multiple injection points in most commercial duct sealing projects, at least one per vertical riser and at least one for each main horizontal trunk. There is no limit to the size or length of duct to be sealed. In some cases, the equipment is operated from the roof. Now that the equipment is assembled and connected to the ductwork, a pre-seal static pressure test is completed. The result is displayed on the computer screen. With the pre-seal leakage rate recorded, the actual sealing process can begin. The patented computer-controlled injection machine begins to heat up adhesive particles suspended in liquid. As the particles are heated, they dry up and become suspended in air. The Aeroseal technology uses a fan to blow these small dry adhesive particles into the block of system at a constant rate of speed. As the particles approach a small hole and try to escape the ductwork, they stick to the side of the hole. As more and more particles repeat the same action, the hole is soon filled. The aeroseal process does not coat the interior of the ductwork and can seal holes as big as five eighths of an inch. As the sealant works inside the duct, the technicians will inspect the occupied space in the areas being sealed. During the sealing process, a live graph provides a real-time look at the progress. By monitoring the live leakage rate, the aeroseal technician can determine when the sealing process has reached maximum results. Once sealing is complete, the technician removes the foam blocks from the system. All injection points are patched, the equipment is packed up, and the HVAC system is turned back on. As part of the measurement and validation plan for the project, a certificate of sealing results is generated. The certificate of completion states the initial leakage rate and the leakage rate after the sealing job is complete, along with a graph representing the sealing process. Here's what the general contractor had to say about this Aeroseal project. We chose Aeroseal for this tough central ventilation job because it's the only process, the only system that we know of that can get the ducts as tight as they need to be so that the system will actually work. Commercial buildings around the world, whether large or small, existing or new construction, can benefit from increased energy efficiency and improved comfort and air quality. Thanks. All right, um, so that is a little bit about AeroSeal and how we work. Uh, I am going to leave the last 20 minutes or so open to Q&A. I know we, we 
sent a lot of information out to you in, um, in that short uh, 40 minutes of time about how we work with ESCOs and what the process is. So I'm going to turn it over to Billy and he will let everyone know how to uh, send questions in. Yeah. So a couple of housekeeping things. I realized that we didn't cover them at the beginning. The presentation has been recorded. Um, and as April is stating, right now, Q&A will go through. You guys can ask some questions. There's already them in there right now. So if you open up your pane, feel free to ask anything. That's what we're here for, um, to go through the process, to go through the, the savings project examples. You name it, we're here to cover that. We have three really good experts when it comes to Aerosil to answer those. Um, so we will jump in. Um, Sean is asking, I believe it's it's just as university buildings, but we could probably go a little further in April. Um, if you wanna share some examples or anything specific around university buildings, I know we have a couple projects that are in the works currently, but um, my guess is they wanna know a little bit about how Aerosil can be used in that application. Yeah, so we've done a, a lot of different universities um, across the country. Uh, if you look at our case studies, there's quite a few examples there. Um, we did some labs at the University of Miami down in Florida. Uh, we did some dorms at the Ohio State University. Uh, we have uh, quite a few uh, buildings uh, in progress at the Ohio State University right now. We have some things working at Penn State. Uh, there are some, also some case studies uh, for things that we've done at Harvard. I know we've done things at Yale and a lot of things out in California um, at the at the uh, University of California system as well. I know I'm forgetting quite a few, um, but if you go to our case studies page, and I, I'm sure I could bring it up right now, um, there are quite a few university examples. Uh, the great thing about universities are there's lots of different applications that we can do there. So just supply ducts and uh, normal classroom applications are always great candidates. A lot of times they're large buildings, um, just like in West Texas A&M, libraries are, are great candidates there as well. Um, but then also in dormitories, um, the large central exhausts are something that we work on quite a bit. Um, and then in the labs, like we I talked about with the University of Miami and I think Harvard was a lab project as well. Um, those exhausts are, are something that we work on quite a bit. So um, I don't know specifically what, what your question is about the universities, but yes, it's something we work on quite a bit. And uh, depending on where you are in the country and what your energy rates are, uh, make those paybacks vary a little bit. Uh, but I would say anywhere from three to seven years is the average payback, um, depending on the project and, and what you're working on for a university. Perfect. I think you did answer his question. He did provide some feedback, so good. Okay. Um, what is the typical pressure drop after sealing the ductwork? Do we have a good answer around that or? Um, yeah, Billy, I can answer that, I think. So the typical pressure drop after sealing the ductwork, well, we, we, you know, well, I don't know if this answers the question. So we usually seal the duct about, we usually seal approximately 90% of the duct leakage. Um, so how does that affect the, the pressure drop you know i think i think there's just a lot of variables there so um um i guess i would need some more information um if the question does the pressure drop change after the the duct is sealed yeah i mean i think we would see a, a difference you know the system the system would change a little bit so you'd see a change in the static pressure drop i think what I can do is we have a white paper that can deal detail that a bit more, and I can provide that information to the to the to the person who's asking the question. I think that might get to the the bottom of it. Perfect. I'll share that contact with you after this, John. Okay. Uh, we have another one. Is this appropriate both for new construction and retrofits when it comes to commercial? That's correct. Um, yeah. So we do new construction quite a bit. 
Um, the good thing about AeroSeal is that if you're trying to meet a certain leakage class in new construction, um, we can help you get there. We can put that leakage class into the computer. And as soon as we get there, you can see that and it's already showing on that certificate of completion. So you know immediately uh, what you're trying to get to it has been hit. Uh, so that is a benefit of doing new construction. We, um, we have mechanical uh, service providers that do that all the time. Uh, and then in retrofit is, is what I work on most of the time on these ESCO projects. Um, and the benefit of that is there's really not another good way uh, to deal with duct leakage in retro because a lot of the leakage is in connections and things that are behind walls and above ceilings that you just normally wouldn't be able to get to without ripping out things um, or a really manual process. It's just really hard. Um, so that's the, the benefit in the retro applications. Perfect. This question, I'll answer this one. I think this one's a public. Um, so the link to that last video that we just shared is public. Um, this question specifically goes if they can share with architects and contractors. So yes, we do have it up publicly on our YouTube channel. Um, and then we can share that out afterwards with all the attendees if they need the link specifically. Um, I can schedule that out and uh, share with everybody, or we can do that in the follow-ups and you name it. But yes, it is a public video that you are more than welcome, more than free to uh, to share with your architects and contractors. Um, yeah, and if I can add to that, we have a spec too, if any architects or, or anyone wants, and that's available on our website as well. Perfect. So this one's around multifamily affordable housing. Have we done any projects there? We have. Um, we did some work with, I think it was a nice CERTA. Um, and then we've been trying to get some things going in some other cities. Um, our, I don't know if you have been working on that any at all, but I know uh, we were working up in Seattle and I don't know if that ever um, came to fruition. Um, but but we have done some things in other areas. I don't know if I have any case studies available, but if you uh, want to reach out to, to me afterwards or Art, um, we can definitely help you. Art, do you have anything to add? Oh, I think Art's muted. So, um, but yeah, oh, there he is. Yeah, no, that's fine. I agree with you, April. I'd be happy to help uh, if there's a specific case study. Uh, after the meeting's over, be happy to. Great. Um, so this question, I can semi-answer this, but I'll let April take it or Art take this after. Um, so does Aerosil perform the audit and work themselves for commercial work as opposed to independent providers doing the work in residential? Um, so there is a slight dynamic there where residential is strictly doing uh, theirs. Uh, we also have independent contractors as well, and then we have a project team, which Art, April, would you like to, to carry on that dynamic and speak a little bit more? Yeah, so um, we have commercial service providers across the country um, for AeroSeal Commercial as well. So it just depends on the, the project and where you are and, and whether there's a commercial service provider. And then also um, whether it's an energy savings uh, performance uh, project or not. Um, AeroSeal uh, takes on the risk um, for doing a guaranteed energy savings project. Uh, for all of the ESCOs. So currently, AeroSeal Corporate is doing all of that guaranteed work ourselves, along with doing all of the upfront um, no cost audits and, and things like that. Um, and then eventually, uh, we will start working with our service providers more on the ESCO market. But as we're developing the ESCO market and really, um, you know, making that 
uh, a viable marketplace for our service providers. Um, it's, it's now our own team working out of Ohio, uh, multiple teams is, are doing all the ESCO work. But um, new construction and on um, things like fixes and, and other types of projects like that that aren't guaranteed um, energy projects, um, our service providers are there and they're able to help you. Great. Um, this one is new. I'm hoping you guys can pick up. Uh, so do you do option B, M, and V to prove savings? Yeah, John, did, are you, go ahead. Yeah, um, I have to look up the, well, I, we, we do uh, stipulated savings. So we do measured, I can't remember the, the designation off the top of my head, but we do measured savings for the airflow. So we measure the pre and post ceiling and then stipulated savings for, you know, that the, 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 those values get plugged into our energy model. And that's a stipulated savings document, you know, that the client signs off on and um, you know, agrees that that is, is appropriate savings. So I know that answers the question. I can't remember the designation off the top of my head, but I think that answers your question on the M&B uh, protocol. And I think at this moment, that brings us to the end of the questions that are currently submitted. I will go on to this final page. And then if there are any additional questions that trickle in, we're still around, so feel free to ask. But um, if you have any follow-up questions or anything related to a future project, anything that you just need a little bit more information, we plan to touch base, uh, especially to follow up with the questions here for learning some more information for those who have provided the questions. Um, but if anybody wants to reach out, uh, here is April's direct contact. Uh, so April Frakes, again, is our national director um, overseeing all these ESCO projects and going through the audits. And she is the, the expert in this field. So. Um, if you have a project, if you have anything you want to learn more, it's it's a hassle-free process and it's guaranteed savings as we've suggested. Um, so there really is little to no risk on your behalf um, and we'd love to speak with you. Otherwise, I will, as we wait for any additional questions, I will pass it back to the speakers for any closing thoughts and words. And we appreciate your time today. And like uh, Billy said, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to um, me. Uh, John is available for any technical questions. He's our Director of Applications and Engineering. And um, Art is available for any non-ESCO opportunities. And uh, we will make sure that you get his contact information as well. And we appreciate you tuning in. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day and we will see you later.